In contrast, the Bulldogs regressed. It was a biting loss, pardon the pun, against Hawthorne. More on the Hawks very, very soon. But where, what does this leave Luke Beveridge again? The, the finals are in risk. And do you think risk. whatever happens from here, there'll be some degree of change around him in the off-season? We've already seen the first of those dominoes fall with Rowan Smith. Well, the most significant thing about Rowan Smith leaving, Craig, is that it sounds like, and the Bulldogs hierarchy have refused to comment on this today, but my understanding is that Luke Beveridge was happy to keep Rowan Smith, and this is a decision that the executive has made at the Western Bulldogs to make that change. Now, we all know the narrative coming out of the Bulldogs that Luke Beveridge runs his show, he runs the footy department and he runs all footy decisions, which shouldn't necessarily be the case with a senior coach. This is a significant shift. You think he got overruled? I do. I, I, I have asked the club. They won't comment. They say that all these decisions will reach mutually in the end by consensus. That's an off-the-record comment, but my understanding is that this was but someone who Luke Beveridge wanted to keep. And let's it face comes it, amidst turnover. A so lot of coaches have left. Yeah, these have... Uh, the, the coaches that have gone either for other opportunities, better opportunities, or have not worked out with Luke. What, what's behind this, do you think? Is it a trend? Well, the trend is up until now. We know that some of those have been fallings out. Some coaches have just not been happy in the end working with Ken, uh, working with Luke Beveridge. I, I, I think that Luke Beveridge is a it's very... to be fair, have gone to bigger opportunities. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And not all of them have left because they fell out with Luke Beveridge. But it's just interesting that Rowan Smith was someone who's been his right-hand man for a long time. Very emotional last week was Luke Beveridge when he announced the departure of Rowan Smith and spoke about the departure of Rowan Smith. I just think there is a move, and it comes from the board and it's being led by Amit Baines and his team, that they need to change the narrative around that football club, that yep. this is not a club being run by the coach. The, the tail has wagged the dog there for a, a little while. And Pardon the pun. And they in, keep losing, Kane, the same that's way. That's what happens in once-in-a-while premierships, right? Yeah. You build disproportionate power. It was a uh, bad loss, Hutch. And the coaching is hardly mm. in a game, but this was stark, wasn't it? Yeah, th it was a bad loss. I thought they had a good first quarter, the dogs. Uh, they were 20 points up, but then they were totally outplayed up until that last 10 minutes where the dogs rallied. But I just wanted to highlight the last play from the Western Bulldogs. How does this happen? Like, this should be structured to the inch, uh, for the last second of, a, of a, a moment where you're trained for this. How does a ruckman who's never, ever taken a kick in in his life do this? This is just random hoping for the best play where some will say, well, they nearly got out of it, but you shouldn't be hoping for luck to get out of it. Obviously, they get tackled here. That was bizarre. Ed Rich was on the scene. And then you go back to this. This was Port Adelaide against the Bombers in round 16 this year. This is a planned, structured kick-in over the top. They don't score straight away, but they do score in 20 seconds' time. That is what you'd expect to play. And then this one, the famous one of round 19. This is a clear plan that Collingwood had, yet the Western Bulldogs didn't have a plan yesterday, Kane. Yeah. And that hurt him. Yeah, and you've been big on what Collingwood have done in close games yeah. and how beneficial has that been for them. So this is their record in close games and it just added to the list of things piling up on Luke Beveridge and it's a reflection of his coaching. There's their record in close ones this year alone. So add that to the fact that he can't maximise the talent and hasn't. They're wasting one of the great lists. Add that to... Uh, the amount of consecutive goals they concede. Another six yesterday against the Hawks. Add it to the poor record this year against top eight sides. Add it to his bizarre selection calls. You put all the blame at his feet, though. Well, yeah, he's the coach, yeah. Hutchie. We've just seen the turnover around that. This is He's had two poor years, two really poor years. All powerful. All and, powerful. And, and, it's and still I just very said, much in this season. Well, well, we get sucked in and we get seduced yep. by them. Like last week... They're better than we get, fighting for the age. 100% they're they are. Their list so, is better than fighting So, as I said, two weeks yeah, ago... Midfield don't defend the way it should they be. They don't. Particularly that, liberate. We'll add that to yep. it as well. And, and yesterday, Sam Mitchell picked him apart. I mean, it was... It, to keep them to under 300 disposals, the way that they were able to possess the ball, shift the defence, uh, and we'll have a look at, at some of that. And Sam Mitchell spoke about it at quarter time. Yeah, I think they uh, deserve to have a lead. We weren't we weren't sharp enough early. Didn't have enough energy in the game, and um, you know I thought they they really controlled the territory game. Five plays two. Five. So they adjusted this plus 13 contested, 106 in uncontested possessions, and over 106 uncontested marks that they've taken. Some of the efforts there, that from Caleb Daniel, not good enough. Easy centre bounce goal there from Newcomb, who had 40 and 10 score involvements. And then you go back again to the very next centre bounce. So, once again, Caleb Daniel pushed off by Newcomb, who had a field day and bullied the Western Bulldogs. So as I said two weeks ago, they need the most forensic review of any of the clubs that have had.
had, and have been big on that for a while now. So they'll be back in the eight on Saturday afternoon. They play the West Coast Eagles. So then it's about taking on uh, Geelong. They have to beat Geelong in the last game to make the finals, Kane. But you want to look at this with yeah. the disposal? Well, did, that, that's it there. Like, look at the dominance from, from the midfield there. You can see those numbers down the bottom highlighted in red. And that's up against Bontepelli and McRae and Trelaw. I know Libba was well held before he got knocked out, but uh, that just highlighted what a poor performance yeah. it was. I've looked at Norton for, for years and thought to myself, he could be one of the great centre-half backs, one of the best in the comp, but I don't reckon he'll ever be a great centre-half forward. He, he's a good centre-half forward, but this is what hurts him and hurts the Western Bulldogs. Look at the scoreline. If he kicks these goals, I've seen it too many times with Aaron where they've got a team on the ropes and he just misses big-time shots. And that's his big area. Will he ever be a good enough kick for goal? Is that mental or bury technique? Teams. I, think it's, uh, I think it's more technique. I don't think he has the best technique for goal. To, as I said, I just wonder. They draft him as a centre-half back. I think they're doing the right thing playing him forward because they're hard to find, but his kicking does hurt them. Hawthorne are doing things magnificently. and It's hard not to get excited about what they could look like next year. They have made so many hard decisions quickly. And there's two pillars that they're building around here, Sicily and Lewis. They're 50% when both play. You do wonder if they've got full seasons out of them both whether they might have been a chance to make a run for it. Certainly, they're going to peak later in the year in the start. And when they don't play, they fall away drastically. So good, yeah, good pick up from you, Hutchie. I was worried three weeks ago that they'd fall out with nothing on the line and they would get tired and it would get ugly in the back half of the season. So the way that he's galvanised the group, you can't speak highly enough of the job he's done.